Hey Leos, how y'all doing? Welcome and happy new year. Uh, we're going to be doing your January general reading here, but before I get into that, I have a couple of brief announcements. So firstly, I have a new Facebook group that I'm really excited about. So my intention with this group was to create a safe and inclusive space where anyone and everyone can get together with other like-minded people and talk about all things metaphysical, talk about intuitive development, intuition in general, anything from prophetic dreams to zodiac signs to, you know, being empaths or, you know, navigating the world as a non-muggle, whatever it is. I want to create a space where people can get together and talk about all of those things um, and feel supported and uplifting while doing so. <clears throat> so I've created that group. It is a private group. If you would like to join, I would be so happy to see you over there. The link is in the description box below. Uh, secondly, so every new year, I do a Celtic cross year ahead spread for myself. And I thought maybe you guys would like one as well. So I'm offering this to you guys as a special limited time, limited availability New Year's reading. So what it is, it's an emailed reading of a picture of your cards of the year ahead, along with a description and then my analysis of what's in store for you in 2022. So I don't have that many left as I'm filming this, but I will try to post more if I can get through them um, at a reasonable rate. But if you would like to book one of the few remaining spots, that link is also in the description box below. So let's get right into your meditation. So huh, the first thing that I saw was a frog. So let's talk about frog medicine. Um, frog medicine is about detoxification, emotional detoxification. It also relates to sort of the like a ten of wands energy in the tarot, which is about, you know, maximum capacity, carrying a maximum amount of load, effort, all of that stuff. And then sort of that moment where, you know, you're carrying it all until you either choose to put it down or you kind of break and, and everything kind of falls a bit. So it's sort of like a, it's sort of a note around the ending of one cycle before the beginning of the next. So with that, <clears throat> I also saw this frog, it was really interesting, I saw this frog kind of move into this, <clears throat> in front of this lake, this body of water. And I had started singing uh, Bob Marley, the don't worry, be happy, cause everything's gonna be all right. And it was, it was like, <laughs> like a grooving frog and then I saw it kind of swim out into the middle of this lake and it was a full moon and it was just like floating around on its back patting on its little feet singing this song feeling like it didn't have a care in the world and um, actually no the sun was out at that point it was loving the sun and then the moon came out and then it flipped back over and its back was up and it just got very very still and it felt like the cold pale moonlight just felt very you know, very still, like I have to freeze, like I have to be very still, like there's no more heat. So I, I have to, I have to retain every bit of energy I possibly have. And then I saw the sun come back out and it came swimming about again. I, I feel like kind of the message with this is that <clears throat> the moon represents the unknown. It represents intuition, psychic abilities, but it can also represent anxiety and mania and fear. And the sun alternatively represents good health, optimism, illumination, warmth, happiness, all of that good stuff. I feel like there's an aspect uh, of January with you guys where it's going to be a bit of both. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. I do feel like there's going to be some ups and downs, right? This is life. But I feel like with you guys, they may feel a bit extreme at times, but know that the downs are really an effort to uh, sort of finish uh, tie up any loose ends of unfinished business that you can move forward into a new cycle without carrying the load of the previous cycle that is going to inhibit you from fully being able to step into this new energy that I feel for you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what your animal energy is. And I feel like it's just that symbol as well. Like everything's gonna be all right. Like it's it's all good. I feel like it's gonna be some ups and downs. You may be in the, uh, a, you know, a place of transition where you're moving 
moving homes or moving jobs, moving relationships, uh, kind of in a transition mode where you're maybe you're upgrading or doing something differently, but it, it does feel like it, it's sort of an in-between up and down space that is all leading to a greater purpose. It is going to feel really, really nice. And you may have moments where you don't completely understand everything that's going on, but it will be illuminated for you eventually moving forward. So your animal energy is a starfish, which I really, really like. So let's talk. So <clears throat> interestingly enough, Starfish energy uh, equates to the lovers in the tarot, which is about love-based choices and choices in love. It's also that aspect of us that can either make choices from love or from fear. So it's interesting that I saw the moon and the sun, and you might have some, we'll say, opportunities this month to make choices and move from love or fear. It's really going to be up to you which one you choose. Um, starfish medicine is also very much about how things appear, how they look on the surface. So it speaks to how does something look and what's beneath the surface and am I taking things at face value or can I kind of, you know, look at things through a different scope and understand that there's more than meets the eye. Meaning when I see these ups and downs or I see this kind of like, you know, sort of like moments of like where it's easy going, the moments where it's a bit more elusive or challenging. It's about understanding that that everything, even though it seems to be a certain way on the surface, that everything really is operating within a divine order. Um, that you you have access to discerning. It's just about um, kind of I, I'm seeing separate yourself from stimuli if you ever feel overwhelmed or confused. So if you have moments of overwhelm and confusion, I feel like it's a sign that you are a little overstimulated, whether it's overworking too many people around, you need some alone time, you need a, a good couple of walks in the woods, a couple of hot baths or saunas, and like, you know, post make you some burrito dinner to just kind of like decompress, whatever that is for you. If you're feeling any way other than like, I, I things may be difficult, but I know it's all good then that's a sign for you to kind of like de-escalate it by removing the stimulation, okay? All right. Let's see what's going on for y'all for January. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> and here we are. Okay, so we have judgment coming here. <laughs> right away here. So fascinating. So major arcana to start you off, which does say that the energies at play are working to serve a greater purpose. It's not as arbitrary that it's a destined or fated, you know, element at play. Along with judgment, like the tagline of this card or key, as it were, is look back with pleasure. Right, So it's about being able to assess where you've been in order to determine where you would like to go. And at the same time, sort of becoming clear around in what ways your relationships or actions or mindsets did not serve you in the past so that you can be aware of them, make some changes going forward, right? But I'm, I'm also aware that this is the second to last key in the major arcana cycle because after this comes the world, which is, which is the successful completion of a cycle. We're looking at the end of a cycle that you've been in, most definitely. Um, and you're being asked to just kind of take stock uh, what did work and what didn't so that you can move forward with your highest and best, you know, shot at your, you know, greatest potential really is what it feels like. I do feel like some of your relationships uh, <clears throat> are coming up for some reconsideration. Could be family, could be friends, could also always be the relationship you have with yourself. But you're being called to kind of examine these things. You know, I feel like I just heard the moon is the medicine. And as I said, the moon is the medicine. We got the queen of cups with another moon here. The moon is the medicine is what I'm hearing. So <clears throat> the moon being the medicine to me means that, you know, the moon, the unknown, our subconscious, you know, all of those things, our intuition, our shadow side, that could be uncomfortable and uncomfortable energy to work with. Being in the sun energy is a lot easier, right? I mean, it's 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 sunny, it's illuminating, it's warm. There's nothing for us to do except find a sunny spot to, you know, bask in. But the moon is the important stuff. The moon is what allows us to sit in the sun more fully, right? So the moon is the medicine. I, again, I feel like you are going to be have the opportunity to do some either shadow work or really do some heavy, it feels like a queen of swords as editing around what and or who has not worked for you 
and make some different choices moving forward. You know, in terms of self-awareness, we as humans are really good at seeing what others need or what others, um, you know, could do to improve themselves or their lives. But when it comes to ourselves, we are very, very good at telling ourselves stories and believing that that is the truth. You're being asked to die, delve more deeply into the stories you tell yourself to the narrative you hold and the scripts that you have and kind of re-examine those. I'm seeing like a, a script of your life being on a table and you going, let me edit this. So Queen of Cups, or at least review it, right? Queen of Cups, she's our most intuitive queen. She's very emotional, very intuitive. Uh, you know, the thing about the Queen of Cups, though, the sh her shadow energy is that she can get overwhelmed by her emotions. And when our emotions are not in balance, our intuition is askew. So you are being asked to really, really balance those emotions. And again, the moon is the medicine. I feel like if you feel like you are not in equilibrium, emotionally or otherwise, it's about removing yourself from the stimuli, connecting in with that intuition and doing an assessment. And that feels incredibly important because it does feel like it's going to feel a bit overwhelming at times this month. But it is serving a greater purpose, right? We don't feel overwhelmed just because life is hard, although we are in the school of life. It's, there's information in the difficult moments. So if we go, this is, this is an opportunity for information. Why am I feeling stressed? Why am I feeling overwhelmed? Why is my perspective, you know, feeling a bit gloomy? What, what is the information in that? Oh, okay, things are a bit chaotic right now, so I'm not in control. And I freak out when I'm not in control because the environment I grew up in, there was no order. It was always chaos and I never felt safe. So that's coming up for me now as an adult and it's informing my decisions. That is just a really random quick example of how our subconscious can be affecting us and we're not fully aware of it. But if we're aware of it, if the moon is the medicine and we're aware of those things, then suddenly we can be like real king of swords about things and make decisions from our conscious state as opposed to our subconscious past, okay? All right. Let's see what else is going on, what's going on, what's going on. <laughs> oh, you are not ready. Or are you? Look, Six of Cups, I, I literally, so how, <laughs> how this is depicted, depicted in this deck as well is so brilliant because it's a lady looking in a mirror at herself and we were just talking about your past. The judgment key has to do with the past. Then we have Six of Cups, it has to do with the past and remembering the past in a better or worse light than it actually occurred. You're being asked to look at yourself in relationship to you and your past so that you can move forward unencumbered and with full clarity and autonomy in and of yourself. Boop, boop, boop. The moon is the medicine. All right, Leo. Definitely being prepped for something. All right. Oh, I almost missed that. Look at the lily pads and I'd seen the frog in the lake. I almost missed that. Okay. Clarifier for judgment. Oh, <laughs> I literally like, do you remember when I saw the judgment and then I was like the key after this is the world's completion cycle. And then you have the world to clarify judgment. So you have the second to last key and then the final key. This is exactly what I was saying earlier. Just exactly what I was saying earlier. Also, you're showing up here as a fixed sign that you are as a Leo, so I like that you're making an appearance here. Well, this is successful completion of a given cycle. This is victory, this is accomplishment and achievement. You are being asked to make some edits and, and realign some things so that this chapter can end with that 10 of wands energy and you can move into a new one and manifest differently and more pleasurably. Queen of Cups, talk to me. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. We have uh, Nine of Wands on the bottom here. That kind of like, yeah, and I kind of saw that kind of like heavy load with like a ten of, ten of Wands. But yeah, it does feel like a lot of weight or effort. So we have Nine of Swords here to clarify the Queen of Cups. So the Nine of Swords, the moon. The Nine of Swords is very much about how <clears throat> we can receive intuitive guidance through our dream time, how our subconscious speaks to us, how it relates to us. But it also speaks of losing sleep over things that are, you know, seemingly out of our control. So this is that not getting great sleep. Then we have the Queen of Cups. 
I feel like what I'm getting with this, because both of these are related to intuition, is I feel like definitely pay attention to your dream time. And sometimes we can really kind of get in our heads about like, oh, what do I do about this? Or what's the truth of this? Why am I feeling this way? But then if we set an intention when moving into dream time for clarity, you know how they say like sleep on it and then you have clarity in the morning? You have an ability with this energy right here to really get some clarity and beautiful answers in your dream time. Time. It's where your subconscious has a direct line to your conscious mind. So take advantage of that and use it because it wants to communicate with you and help you. That's what it's there for. Really, really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. I like how that's aligning for you with the energy. I, li I like the Nine of Swords in this context. <laughs> okay, Six of Cups. Six of Cups. <laughs> oh... Six of Cups to the Six of Wands, victory, achievement, accomplishment, being in the public eye, public recognition. Look back to move forward and you're moving forward into victorious. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that we get the public recognition key here because, you know, it's interesting. I'm getting, you know, something around those of you who are in lines of work where you are in the public eye or you're in a line of work where, you know, others look to you for advice or counsel or whatever this is, it will behoove you even more so to get to know the shadow aspect of yourself. Again, the moon is the medicine um, and to kind of see the factors at play that might be influencing you or keeping you from being the best, brightest um, you know, healed version of yourself because that stuff will come out into the light, right? I feel like this is the moon and this is the sun that we've been talking about this entire time. This, again, victory. It's, it's this is this is that kind of victory that other people can witness. And then we have the laurel here as well, which we got in the world key. So that does tell me that kind of the greater reason for a lot of this and what you're moving to in the sun with the sunflower here is to, to really allow yourself to step into this new cycle, like I said, unencumbered, but also in the know, right? So that you can go ahead and grab those six wands and go trotting off into the, you know, high visibility and, and help others to the best of your ability to do your work to the best of your ability. Because remember, the wands are about, well, they, it's about the actions that we do or don't take, but wands are also about the work that we love to do. Pentacles are about the work that we do and, and financial compensation, all that stuff. But wands are about the work that we love to do. And that's coming up for you here with the Six of Cups. Right? Look back with love, review the past, learn from it, get clear on what's not working with and for you, and move right on into victory. Work it out. Let's get an oracle. I'm feeling this one. Let's get an oracle from my Leos here. <laughs> so we got the hawk prince, the hawk prince, which I'm obsessed with. So spirit communication, paying attention, paying attention, number 11. So, you know, hawk medicine is very much about how you see things and being able to see the bigger picture and the smaller details at once and equally as well. It's also two of wands energy about prepping yourself before you get what you want with the three of wands and you're actually moving forward in a big way. Spirit communication, like I said, information through dream time and intuition with the Queen of Cups, paying attention is really being willing to look at the aspects of yourself that are not necessarily discernible in the light of day, but only under the light of the moon and in the shadows and possibly the past. This is very auspicious though. It just feels it feels like you're being anointed in a way where said I'm being like, you know, anointed by fire to kind of move into a, a brand new phase. You're being you're being invited to tie up some karmic patterns or karmic self um, you know, perceived limitation kind of thoughts or attitudes so that you can really move forward into a new energy and manifest new things. And I'm really excited to see it for you. It's really, really beautiful. So with that being said, Leo, this is your January general reading. I so hope that this helped and resonated. And if it did, would you please let me know in the comments below? I would really appreciate that. I really love reading your comments. I would also love it if you could like this video, hit the like button, wherever it may be, and also share this video and please subscribe and hit that little bell. 
to get the notification. So if you do that, that allows me to come back more regularly with similar content for you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much in advance for doing all of those things. And uh, with that being said, again, just thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And most of all, and as always, thank you for being you and be well. Until next time.